Hello, and welcome to another episode of Copper Bottomed. It's been about a month since I did the last one, so apologies for not putting it out on a weekly or fortnightly basis. I've just been really busy, uh, a few trips abroad, and just general manic workload. Uh, but my goodness, what a month it has been in the copper space. There's been so much going on, principally um, copper prices continue to rise. And of course, the big news is that BHP made a bid for Anglo-American, ostensibly for the um, the copper assets, the copper production. Um, I'm not going to uh, kind of go into the detail of BHP and Anglo. I think that's been very well covered and very well commentated on by many other people. But let's just talk around some of the thematics here. Basically, what we've got is a major... Um, mining company using its paper, using its equity to buy the production of another major mining company. Um, if you look at the the general kind of commodity space, uh, I'm hearing it just in terms of the valuations, you know, I haven't got the model, so I'm not running it, but the brokers are telling me that the copper majors are trading at around two times NAV. Um, now, historically, uh, you'd expect uh, these kind of things to be trading at around one, one times NAV, possibly even at a discount um, to to nav um <clears throat> but for the majors to be trading at two times nav suggests a couple of things one is that the the big equity um houses expect the copper price to go on a tear and also um for the equities to also uh rise it may also be a reflection of the fact that uh the copper space is a relatively small uh investor investment universe there are not many names that large scale equity funds or institutions can access and so when you have a lot of money pulling into or piling into a small space what happens is that there, there's kind of outperformance but um, it's crucial to kind of take these into account the copper price the copper space is very popular at the moment the majors are um, using their equity to buy production rather than building now let's have a let's have a look at this um, so here we are <clears throat> I'm recording this on the 8th of May 2024. Um, I pulled down the copper price early yesterday morning um, and it was showing $4.59 per pound. That's just over uh, $10,000 per ton. And if you look at the, the five-year price chart, you can see that it's um, kind of risen from uh, whatever that is, $2.80 over there up to uh, $4.50. Fifty-nine. It was it hit four dollars sixty-one yesterday at one stage. So the kind of the copper price is on an upward trajectory, and as I've mentioned, the majors are not yet jumping in to uh, start building and investing in new production of copper. What they're doing is they are they're they're standing on the sidelines. They're using their equity to buy, and they're all looking at what tech is doing um, with um, uh, Cabrera Blanca. So QB2 was a is a is a major copper expansion project that was started by Tech in 2018, and what they're aiming to do there is to uh, uh, do this huge expansion and thereby double the production, roughly from 300,000 tons from Tech's copper um, division to 600,000 tons when this thing comes into production. Um, <clears throat> back in 2018, the estimated escalated capital cost of the project was $5.2 billion. Um, the nameplate or the kind of unescalated cost was $4.7 billion. Now, just in October last year, the new capital estimate is has risen to $8.6 to $8.8 billion. So, you know, there's been a massive um, cost expansion here. Now, why is this? There are a couple of really crucial things here. One is that the um, the skills associated with these large copper projects have slightly been lost in the copper industry. As you may recall from the last copper bottom that I did, I showed you that there was a golden period of copper mine building from, where were we, 1990 to 2009. Here we are, you know, 15 years later, and tech is trying to build this major project. And if you actually, so from the October um, news release that Jonathan Price, the CEO, said when you look at QB2, it's really five or six major projects rolled into one with a port, pipelines, mines, and tailings, etc. And I mean, you can this this little sketch here shows you the um, this is the desalination area and the port, and these are the this is the um, the kind of infrastructure 
um, conduit. There's a concentrate transport system. There's a desalinated water transport system, power supply and transmission system, and access roads. And then you come up to the, um, the at altitude, you've got the um, the mine site area and, and all of that, the concentrator, the whole the whole works. So all of these major projects. Um, in that same October news release, uh, there was mentioned that. Um, they had to replace 16 of these major pumps along this kind of um, system here. I'm not sure whether it's for the water or for the concentrate, but these 16 pumps, big, big major pumps, they were overheating. They hadn't got the design quite right. And so therefore they were, um, they had to be replaced. So the industry is watching tech. The costs have in some ways kind of exploded. And, and that's a function of the complexity of the project, but it's also a function of the devaluation of the dollar so the dollar is depreciating in value and this is really really crucial because what you're seeing is that the costs have risen but actually if you look at the the copper price in real money terms which is what i've done here if you look at this graph in this corner here this is the copper price uh divided by the gold price and what you can see is that for the last Okay, ignoring this spike, but if you go back the last 20 years, effectively the copper price has been declining. Really, really interesting. So the copper price has been declining and it continues to decline because the producers have effectively been quite good at supplying the market. And if you realize now that a lot of the major mines are getting tired, um, I heard an anecdotal report last week um, from a very good source who sits on the board um, or let me how to, how to phrase this without giving the game away, without revealing my sources. Um, from a very good source, the discussion at the Cadelco um, board meetings or the Escondida um, board meetings are all about how do they maintain production at 1.3 million tons per annum. You know, that's that's a lot of copper coming out of one mine, and they're and they're at the point now where all of their efforts are trying to maintain production. There's no discussion about growth. And if you look at um, the top 20 um, copper mines in the world, there are very, very few that are actually in the growth phase. I mean, Kamoa um, Kakula, Kamoa Kakula, of course, is an exception. But a lot of these things are tired. They've mined the best bits already. And you're coming into the kind of the lower grade material that only really works because you paid off the capital of um, and the infrastructure. So growth in this sector is really, really hard. The majors aren't investing in growth. They're buying production. Um, they're swapping ownership around. Copper prices in real terms have been declining for 20 years and continue to decline. We know that it takes 17 or 18 years to build a new copper deposit and demand just gets stronger. I mean, um, there's been lots of talk about uh, the energy transition, about transmission lines, about increased copper in um, electric vehicles, wind and solar, all of that. Um, you probably know that I'm not a huge um, believer in rapid energy transitions. I've read too much Vaclav Smil and about the um, energy density to uh, see a long-term future for, for wind and solar as a major part of any grid. However, um, what is completely clear is that copper is vital to modern life and every aspect of modern life. I take, for example artificial intelligence. Here we go. Um, this is a Reuters article on the 8th of April, 2024, which saying that copper demand is linked, sorry, copper demand linked to artificial intelligence and data centers could add up to 1 million metric tons by 2030 and exacerbate supply deficits towards the end of the de decade, commodity trader Trafigura said. A million tons by 2030, just on um, AI and data centers alone. There was a Jeffrey's report, which puts the figure a little bit lower, but um, I think I think it was half that. They were talking 450,000 um, to 500,000 tons by the end of the decade. But that's only six years away. And remember, there are only six mines in the entire world that produce more than half a million tons per annum. And a lot of those are um, aging and tired. So um, in essence, for the next phase of copper production to be stimulated real new production copper prices uh in dollar terms today need to be a lot lot higher this is ten thousand dollars per ton i've been talking about fifteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars per ton 
every time I review the copper price in real numbers, you know, real money, it makes me think that um, a big, a big change is going to come. I think iron ore in 2003, 2004, when it traded between 30 and $40 per tonne. And then it's led to this kind of 20-year growth of kind of fantastic earnings um, with iron ore prices from, I don't know, from 80 to $160 per tonne. Really, really interesting space. Um, but of course, what this means is that you want to be uh, uh, invested in good exploration and good development companies. And so go copper, go explorers. Um, let's get into it. Now, I have done this so infrequently that there are many, many companies that have been reporting good copper intercepts. Um, I can't cover all of them. What I do is I use Junior Mining Hub weekly results summaries, um, and I pull out the the, the copper results from those. Um, this session of copper bottomed. I'm going to go right back to the 30th of March. Remember, that's the day that the news that this summary is produced. So some of these um, uh, news uh, releases were published in the last week of March. 6th of April, the 13th of April, and the 20th of April. Many, many names here. The ones in bold I'm going to talk about. So Imperial Metals, Aldebaran, Western Copper and Gold, C3 Metals, Nine Mile Metals. They actually put out two releases, although I, 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 for reasons that they will become clear, I've only covered one of them. Tribeca Resources, um, 22 meters at 0.27. Um, not a huge intersection. The market capitalization is unchanged, um, so I'm not going to cover them today. Attico Mining will cover Ivanhoe Electric again. Uh, uh, where are we here? 82 meters at 1.22. Um, their market cap's $1.74 billion. And if you like that, go for it. Um, but essentially, it's unchanged by this story. So I'm not going to cover that. Corex Copper put out two releases. They're also more or less unchanged. Their market cap is $24 million. All of this drilling is within the envelope, more or less of um, an existing resource. So um, no change there. Benton, uh, they put out, you know, another 21 meters at 2.2%. Good stuff, great, but great burnt is still going. Their market capitalization is unchanged, more or less, at $26 million. I've spoken about them a few times, so uh, um, they don't need to revisit that. B Metals Corp, uh, they've got their asset in Zambia, which I'll cover QC Copper and Gold, uh, a, a kind of no great shakes, but also not bad intersection of 22.5 meters at 0.72. We like their market capitalization hasn't really changed from $23 million, 13 cents. Open Misca, it's waiting, I guess, for permits. So I haven't covered that. Um, I'll, I'll come around to QC Copper again um, in due course. Um, right, the following week, um, uh, Faraday Copper, uh, largely unchanged, another 117 meters at 0.4%, um, the market cap 118. It's kind of, they, they, they've broadly kind of got their envelope of mineralization and they're kind of working within those um, parameters. Um, Corex, I mentioned up here, Camino Minerals, um, tapping away for copper in Peru. I'll cover them. I don't think I've spoken about them before. I think that's the first time on. Um, metallic Minerals, I've mentioned them before. Abitibi, nice story there. Arizona Metals Corp, I'll talk about them. Trigon, um, they're in production in Namibia. The production story is actually more important than the expiration. Really, it's about the balance sheet. Um, their market cap is largely unchanged at $37 million, so I'm not going to cover that. Um, and Mundoro Capital, their market capitalization is $18 million and 100 meters at 0.1. It's kind of, it, it, it is what it is. We're not going to cover that. Right, so let's get into it. Okay, right, Imperial Metals. Now, the, the weird thing was I went to the website and I couldn't find the news release from uh, mid-March, but I did find this one from um, late April, so I'm going to talk about this one. It's, it's a strange company, this one. They've got a market capitalization of $421 million. Their share price has kind of barely moved in the last couple of years. It's an incredibly unfriendly website. If you go there and you're looking for information, there's there's almost nothing to be had. Anyway, so it feels as if they really don't want to be listed. It feels as if they're giving you the big kind of handoff. Um, this feels as if it kind of wants to be a private company. Um, but nevertheless, they did put out this news release and they did um, publish it. So I will honor it. 
Um, they've drilled 270 meters at 0.65% copper and 0.48 gold at Mount Polly. Now, that's a great, that's a great um, intersection. That's really good stuff. Um, and it was from 22 meters uh, depth, which is really good. Drilling is ongoing um, with almost 5,000 meters and 20 holes complete to date. Now, uh, the bit I've highlighted is it was a vertical hole located on, um, it was a vertical hole planned to to target gaps in the southwestern portion of the Springer Zone at shallow and deep. It's got good potential to be converted from resource to reserve due to its proximity to existing mining and planned pits. I mean, that's a that's a zinger of a hole if you're going to transform waste into mine. I mean, that's, that's really, really good stuff. Um, uh, it doesn't actually change the overall story. It's just important um, work that should be um, should be done in the in the kind of normal process of um, operating a mine. Um, I did uh, smile at this though, which has said that the collar was, the hole was collared on tailings in the Springer pit. So strange that they're storing tailings in the pit, but there we go. I mean, um, perhaps that's the only place that they're allowed to store them. Um, and what was also strange was that um, here we go. This is the hole down here. So that's the full intercept, and this is the first 158 meters. Nice section, um, not very geological, but it's 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 better than nothing. So I was uh, yeah, I was surprised by the lack of geological conversation in here. And then there's this um, comment right at the bottom: insufficient geological information is available to confirm the geological model and true width of significant assay intervals. Really? Hang on, this was a mine. How can you not have a <laughs> How can you not have a, a geological model? Um, anyway, so uh, it, as I said, very, very strange company, very strange website, very strange that they don't have enough geological information, but at face value, that's a good hole. Right, onwards and upwards. Aldebaran Resources. Look at this share price. Here we go. Um, this is a five-year share price, and they are just on a steady upward trajectory. While I was preparing this, uh, John Black did an interview with Matt, which I actually listened to just before um, uh, recording this. Uh, John speaks very well. It, it was it was really interesting. I don't think it's going to change anything that I um, say here, which is that they've got a decent market capitalization. These are long holds of low grade, but they talk about it very clearly within the um, news release. So very very straightforward news release well put together i mean john and kevin are seasoned hands uh, this is it's what i'd expect from them pleased to report results for five drill holes of the 2324 field campaign at alta in san juan argentina so they report 235 236 7 8 and 9 all substantial step outs to the north or south of known mineralization excuse me the holes were designed to test the edges of known mineralization, expand the mineralized footprint. All holes hit mineralization and successfully extended the mineralized footprint. Yeah, this is what we're going to do. This is what we did. Uh, let me tell you about it. All good. Um, yes, there's a lot of kind of 0.34 copper equivalents. You've got to really fish around in the in the in the, in the tables to understand it, um, but. John's very candid as well. He says most of the reported drilling results have been from holes on the edges of the deposit where there was little to no drilling completed historically. These holes may not be the most exciting from grade perspective. They provide valuable information and are necessary to complete a resource update later this year. So the mineralization, if you look at this, um, the color, uh, the color stuff, uh, the color bar, pinks and reds are hot. Uh, yellows and um, oranges are warm and blues and purples are cold and this hole there we go warm finishing hot this one cold warm cold warm hot so look at that they've got and john talks about this he says uh the hole 239 ended due to drill rig depth capacity this is 239 here this one the grades are increasing with depth which suggests we may be getting to an undiscovered mineralized porphyry intrusion yeah yeah <laughs> you might be but my goodness that's going to be deep but um 
interesting. I mean, the the the, the holes themselves. It's kind of cubic kilometers of low grade mineralization. Uh, companies on the right trajectory. Argentina's on the right trajectory, even though these holes aren't particularly exciting. The companies. Uh, going in the right directions, onwards and upwards, right? Western copper and gold. Now, <laughs> they've got a market capitalization of $385 million and the casino project and a huge capital uh, bill to build this. And you can see that they are in the boring study phase of their project. You know, the share price has barely moved. Um, one could even say it's on a downward trajectory in the last um, four or five years. It's had a bit of a kick since the copper prices have um, kind of jumped a little bit, but as I've been talking about, we haven't actually seen copper price rises yet. All we've seen is the ongoing devaluation of the dollar reflected in the spot price. So um, I had a look at the website to pull this news release up, and some other headlines caught my eye. So I'll just mention those: is that they've um, Rio Tinto has <clears throat> followed its interest and is um, you know it's it's taking up its rights. Uh, to be a part of this project. And then they've just done a $46 million raise on the back of this. These big projects, once you're in the kind of the study and development phase, they're they're expensive. You're spending a couple of million dollars a month. So um, well done to the team for doing the raise. Well done to the team for getting Rio Tinto on board. Um, the, the share price, the market tells you there's a way to go yet in terms of any transformational change. The drill program from last year was seven holes, uh, not hugely deep, 130 to 556. They were inside the current pit boundaries, therefore they're not going to change the envelope, and that's why you don't get any kind of exploration growth um, excitement in the share price. And they were selected to provide a range of grades, host rocks, and mineralogy for the metallurgical program. So they're priming you to say, well, don't be surprised if we see some low grade, because we do have to take some low grade to do the MET test work on that. And sure enough, if you look down the copper grades... You can find that there are uh, quite a lot of low grades in there. Um, but that's okay. The, re the results continue to show the importance of the core zone, um, uh, including a kind of good bit of super, super gene mineralization. Uh, it is what it is. Western coppers, it feels as if it's grinding lower. Uh, maybe with this change of the market, this is, this is actually an inflection point, and it might start to grind higher. But this, I don't think there's going to be an... Um, an um, I don't think there's going to be a kind of a step change. It's going to be more incremental. But um, the industry needs these these big projects. I I question whether this is actually going to make money unless we have a massively higher share price. So maybe this is a kind of a leverage play on a on a low grade or a low margin asset. Right onwards, uh, C3 Metals. I've spoken about this company a few times before. They're exploring in Jamaica. They've got an asset in Peru as well, which kind of it's almost like a, a counterweight. So, you know, buy one get one free. Um, micro market capitalization, twenty four million dollars. Shock horror share price. It's been an absolute disaster in terms of the capital markets in the last uh, couple of years. But they're not alone. It's a very very tough space for the for the um, junior companies. And I, I like the geology and I like the approach. So Dan Simons, oh, this news release, by the way, um, was very long and very complicated and it was all over the show and I couldn't really work out how to kind of synthesize and summarize it for a, a one slide snapshot. So I ended up going to the quote that Dan Simons gives, which is saying that Provost is one of 16 porphyry prospects within the mineral concession package in Jamaica mineralization remains open to the east, north, and at depth. So they hit about 450 meters of cumulative copper mineralization with increasing chalcopyrite at depth, and they also saw burnite, bornite. Typo there, which is interesting. They need to run their spell check more. And then he goes on to say, we've got many high-quality near-surface targets across our district-scale package, and a disciplined, systematic exploration approach is required to maximize the probability of achieving our size and grade target criteria. This is, and then the, the, this next bit is really interesting. Until market conditions for junior exploration companies improve or a strategic alternative is in place to finance a meaning, meaningful deep drilling program, we believe the best value adding proposition in the near term is to focus our exploration efforts on nearer surface targets. So what they're saying is, 
We're not feeling the love from the market. We're a bit skinned. We know we've got a really good portfolio here and we're going to focus on um, doing the low cost value add work that's not going to deplete our coffers. Um, and investors come and back us because I think they're going to say we've got some really good prospects. And, and when I had a look at this, um, you know, some of these grades are pretty good. You know, um, 104 meters at 0.37 copper with 0.1 gold. You know, these, these are more than sniffs. These are more than sniffs. They, they, they're onto something here and the market hasn't backed them. So um, really, really interesting. Now, why did I include this at the bottom? Uh, Ads for Bellas Gate project is an early stage exploration project and there is insufficient metallurgical data to allow for estimation of recoveries. Um, you know, they're basically saying, we don't have enough information, but we're going to do it anyway. So copper equivalents, ah, really, really still don't think they are a good idea um next steps they've got two drill rigs they'll keep going for a bit i should imagine but um they're basically saying they're going to find ways of exploring for a lower cost which means not drilling but i, th I uh, this this company these projects long term i really like the, the prospects next right attico the guys that run this company are great really really super people um Share price, however, has really struggled and the market capitalization is $25 million. I went to the news release from April the 4th. They talked about the results from the latest 49 holes are out to expand and they're, they're showing that they're expanding the tonnage at El Roble. They include and they also report results from seven, 16 diamond drill cores. So it, can, it was kind of a little bit confusing there. You know, what, what are we getting, 49 or 16? Um, and one of the drill cores included 21 meters at 6% copper uh, and 4.5 grams gold. All good. All grade intercepts and another 14 drill holes also reported with limited um, in areas with limited drilling. So the possible possibility of extending the ore body with additional drill programs. It was fine. Um, so the infilling known areas of mineralization while at the same time looking for ext extensions of the historic massive sulfide deposits at the El Roble deposit says Fernando Ganosa. These strong assay results continued to increase confidence in our view that additional high-grade copper and gold mineralization remains both within the historically defined bodies and beyond the previously outlined mineralized shell and are open at depth and along strike. Um, and they're doing a new resource and they'll make this available shortly. Now, exploration results when you're in production, they have to be really, really significant to change the value of your company because they've got to a single drill result has to from beyond the known uh, envelope of mineralization you've got you've got to get a new drill result which is going to change that entire envelope so exploration results for a mining company are not necessarily that important but a new resource estimate is so i went to that news release and it showed um that they've got uh, 800,000, 828,000 tons at 2.49% copper and 2.2 grams gold. Um, they also, in the text, they talk about a good conversion rate from measured and indicated resources to proven and probable reserves. So that's, they've obviously got a real handle on the geological model and how to shift it from drill core into mineable blocks. So that's really good. And then they say, the life of the mine has been extended until the first quarter of 2027, which is just round the corner. So here we are uh, in Q2 2024. This thing runs out of ore in less than three years, and they've got to uh, do all of the drilling, do all the resource modeling, do all of the development to get uh, and, 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 and. It's a very, very short space of time. There's a lot of work to do before then. These guys are going to be really, really, really busy hamsters running on a little hamster wheel just to kind of keep the lights on here. This is, this is classic small mining stuff. Just pick the size of your hamster wheel and run, run, run. Um, and the size of the hamster wheel is kind of also shown in a recent news release, which was April the 22nd. Um, here we go. They produced, uh, in this quarter, 3.34 million pounds of copper, which is about 1,500. Um, oh, there we go. I've actually d done it there. 1,515 tons of contained copper um, and 2,000 ounces of gold. So they are 
if you multiply that by four, you're at 6,000 tons of copper per annum. Um, and uh, what's that? It's kind of eight and a half thousand ounces of gold. This is, this is small, small, um, pequeña minería. You know, this is small scale mining. Uh, copper grade, um, it pretty matches pretty well. Um, you know, the copper grade 2.5. And if you look at the reserve grade going forward 2.4, they had a little bit of a dip in the gold grade, but basically, uh, you know, they're mining on grade. So they know they're mining. They know their operation. They know their geology. It's just, it's a small hamster wheel. Um, anyway, run hamster run. Um, good. Onwards and upwards. B Metals Corp. Okay, these are the old um, B2 guys. Really weirdly, they're still, if you go to their website, they're still talking all about Japan, but all of their action and all of their effort is on um um, Zambian copper rather than J Japanese gold or gold in Japan. So I feel as if they kind of not quite emotionally engaged with the company yet or the, with the website or with the market. I, I'm not sure what, but it just feels very weird when you go to that website. Right. Um, we've covered them before. They've had a couple of hits. April the 3rd, um, multiple zones of copper mineralization uh, from DC, uh, D14C1. So, yes, sorry, just to go back, back up a bit. The company is pleased to announce remaining drill results from its 2023 exploration program at the Pangeni Copper Project in Zambia. A new phase of core drilling has recently commenced to identify additional zones of high-grade copper and expand the footprint of the mineralization. So, the, the remaining drilling results, I can tell you, are two holes, and the highlights come from one hole, which is 14C1 multiple zones of copper mineralization. And this is the cross-section here. Interval 1, 69.4 meters at 0.25, and interval 2, 33 meters at 0.23. Hmm, it's quite low grade down there, and 0.25, oof, that's quite low grade down there. I mean, you, I mean, how do you do this? How do you do this? Maybe with ore sorting. Uh, you know, the, the individual grades are okay, but when you average them out with all the internal dilution, hmm, it's really, really tough. Um, John Wilson says they got Dick Silito to come out and review the geology, and he says it's closely similar in geological setting, style, and age. Yeah, to that exploited by Barrick at Lemoyne. It may be true, but probably not similar in terms of grade, unless this is what Barrick is mining now, having already paid off the capital and all of the infrastructure with high-grade portions earlier. Um, it does go on to say that current results motivate further drilling. True. Um, and they said they recently started a th about a 2,000 meter program, which 600 meters has already been done, and results are coming. So we'll keep an eye out on that. They're looking beneath Kalahari sand cover, so effectively they're going blind or on geophysics because this is whatever it is, 70 or 80 meters of cover, maybe a bit less. What these are? These are 100 meter hole um, clicks. So yeah, maybe that's 30 to 40 meters, but still. Um, or 30 to 50 meters, um, still you're operating under cover, so you're going blind, you're running on geophysics. Um, and then, of course, much later in the news release, it says drill hole D11C1 did not intersect any significant zones of copper mineralization. So never mind. Um, as it says, copper current results motivate further drilling. I agree. Go for it. Go, explorers. I uh, keep going the wrong way. Right. We come to Camino Minerals, uh, the mighty Camino, market capitalization of $13 million Canadian, um, kind of pretty blocky, low volume, not that much interest, uh, share price chart, Peruvian copper project. Ah, ah, it's tricky in Peru. I, it, just, just to get the valuation you want in Peru, it's tricky. But anyway, these guys are on the coast. Uh, they've got their Los Chapitos copper project. Um, it's near Chala in Arequipa in Peru. Uh, they've done some step-out drilling. They hit new exploration targets at Diana Lourdes, Koji Norte, and Koji Sur. And they were tested for the first time, where they're targeting large-scale disseminated manto-type copper mineralization to support the resource delineation studies at Los Chapitos. So they're basically looking for more mantos. And they're looking for open pit copper oxide deposits that could be aggregated into a mine plan. They're looking for satellites. 
Uh, they completed a drill campaign aimed to expand beyond the previously identified Adriana zone, which is the main zone at Los Chapitos, and they've, that's already got over 20,000 meters. Good. And they've got a partner, Nitetsu Mining, um, and they're going to start the second phase of drilling in the next phase of drilling in the second half of 2024. So what were the highlights from phase one? They hit, um, they got a hit at Diana, 25 meters at 1.34 with a little bit of silver. Um, and they hit a little bit at Lourdes, 7 meters at 0.8% copper from 20 meters, again with a little bit of silver. And that Lourdes ex, um, hit ex, it potentially extends the copper ex- oxide mineralization about 120 meters, which is good. Um, and Jay, um, I'm not going to try and pronounce his surname, Jay, the CEO, says the recent success of our step out drilling has revealed high grade, mm. uh, well, it's, it's re- revealed mineralization across intervals underscoring the potential yes tick of the copper mineralizing system yes they uh diana extension of lords uh affirm our strategy identify new resources new deposits that could contribute and ultimately form our mine planning strategies yes clunky english but i, I get it um the objective of the step out drilling campaign was to explore for new zones good designed to test for buried copper stratoband mantles okay now this 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 um is interesting the first phase of drilling of 15 holes completed to depths of 150 meters so shallow holes and they did 2226 meters good i like it you know it's a good strategy the market hasn't caught on yet they probably need to um get kind of chunkier mineralization this is interesting that there were sniffs here Oh, the, the 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 pictures in the in the news release are very poor quality. So apologies for the for the graininess. This one has come out better. I don't know why. So that's kind of a Manto style thing here. It's um it's a bit ho hum, but this is exploration. It's tough. You got to get out there and you got to do it. And these guys are out there and they're doing it. So um good for them and keep going. Right. Okay. Here we go. Metallic Minerals announces drill results and new drill targets at the La Plata Project, Colorado, USA. $48 million. Share price hasn't done much over the last couple of years, but it's held up reasonably well. Um, I mean, it's been tough markets for them to have kind of only had that kind of decline. That's a pretty good job. Uh, this news release was the final results from the 2023 drill campaign. 2023 i mean that's a long time ago so it's it's this this has been a long time coming it's really interesting that it's taken this long to get the results out um 4530 meters in four diamond drill holes so on average it's over four a thousand meters per drill hole these are long deep drill holes and they're looking to expand on the 1.2 billion pound whatever that is uh, 500,000 tons of um, copper and the silver resource. Okay, and then came the most exhaustive and exhausting news release. Oh my goodness, my head almost exploded to trying to process this information. <laughs> In the end, I kind of gave up and I went to, you know, and I'm a professional. I, I kind of, I, I, I read these things because I have to, but my head was swimming. So please, guys. You know, if you can, can, if you can kind of synthesize your thoughts a little bit more clearly, that'd be brilliant. Um, I ended up going to the about bit at the end, and it says it's a resource stage company. Um, they've got this project in May, um, Newcrest, um, now Newmont, uh, is a strategic investor. And there was a very good diagram. I like this, the Allard resource. Um, it showed the can't remember which one the new holes are and which ones are not but anyway i was was so confused but what it does show you is that there's a a lot of very low grade uh mineralization but actually if you follow the hot spots the pinks it's got a core so any economic development is going to depend on um maximizing the return from that central core and then just running the thing um beyond that so um metallic minerals 48 million dollars um it's hard to to have an opinion when the news release is that hard to read but um good luck keep going abitibi metals now this is a nice story uh 
in the last copper bottomed show i noticed that abitibi metals had got some really good drill results kind of 50 meters at two percent copper i was really interested i wanted to kind of learn more about it and then when i went to the website i couldn't get into the presentation they wanted to kind of um harvest my my um details and i i've got no real problem about that but i just thought this was a blockage between potential investors getting to see the company information and so i backed away and as i mentioned it on copper bottomed and i got a couple of days later i got a really nice email from the ir team at abitibi and um the ir person i'm afraid to have um uh, I've, I've deleted the email. And I can't find the name, but anyway, the very kind II, IR person at Abitibi and uh, Jonathan Deleuze, um, they sent me the presentation and they said that they had heard the feedback and they have taken out that obstacle to getting the presentation. So now if you go to the website, you can just look at the presentation. So thank you very much for listening. I, th- I hope it serves you well. And um, I honor you by talking about your uh, ongoing exploration results um, 20 meters at 1.35% copper equivalent, um, drill holes 33 to, uh, 333 to 337. So five holes and hole 30, 335 was 27 meters at 0.93% copper equivalent. Again, copper equivalents, they're a bit misleading because when you come down to here, hole 335, um, you get 26.9 meters at 0.06% copper. Mm. So actually, that's a silver intercept with a zinc. So it's a zinc silver intercept, that one. And then hole 36 is 18 meters. Let's go straight to that. 18 meters. Sorry, hole 36. N- no, 20 meters. Uh, 19.75 meters at 1% copper. So that is a copper hit with a bit of um, tiny amount of silver and a little bit of gold. Look at that. So the copper and the gold seem to be going together and the zinc and the silver. So that's interesting. Good. We like copper and gold. Assays from 30 holes remain pending um, and they've hit the satellite west zone 500 meters to the west of the main deposit. These new results demonstrate that the Felsic volcanic complex hosting the mineralization is open to the northwest and represents a new expansion target with no historical drill target. And in this section over here, there's a nice long section. Um, this is over here. I would love to see a cross section. I would love to see um, less use of copper equivalents, particularly in these polymetallic deposits. Um, having said that, I think they've got a um, there's a historic resource on this, so in, in they might be able to get away with um, using a copper equivalent number. Right. But all of that so far was in the kind of the preamble to the news release. Oh, and there's one more highlight as well. The company remains well funded with $18.5 million to complete the remaining 16,500 meters uh, for the 2024 work program, plus an additional 20,000 meters in 2025. So you've got 36,500 meters of drilling coming which is going to be incorporated into a PEA. So in this kind of opportunity-rich geological environment, with exploration being valued, with that kind of money, with that kind of drilling, this looks really exciting. I, I don't know much about the company. I would like to speak to them more, but just on face value, both in terms of the way that they responded to my last news release and the kind of the general tenor of the the, the, the system here, uh, and also the the scale of the funding they've got and the drilling that they're going to be doing, all of this adds up to quite an enticing package and would make me want to investigate uh, this a lot more. Don't be put off by this share price jump. The market capitalization is only $46 million, um, and it's probably easier to get a $46 million company to be taken seriously by investors than it is to get a $6 million company. Right, good. I don't need to go through that bold stuff. I've really spoken about most of that already. So onwards. Ah, I think this is our last one. Um, Arizona Metals Corp. They've got a mighty market capitalization of $263 million, um, but it used to be a lot higher. I think it's probably over $500 million at one stage. Uh, they've hit uh, another 20 meters at 3.4% copper, which is a good result. Uh, copper equivalent. 
So what are they reporting? They are reporting 11 new drill holes at the K mine deposit. What a mouthful. Um, three holes on the southern edge of the deposit have encountered zones of high-grade copper-rich mineralization. Holes 143, 139, and 137. Okay. Jumping around a bit. So to get the copper equivalent, that you know, this company really, really hangs on to its copper equivalents and never gives you the breakdown. So the only way you can get to it is by going to the table. And if you go to the table in the news release, it's almost unin um it's almost unintelligible. It's almost legible. But I did manage to do it. So hole one four three is this one here. One four three. Uh one point eight eight percent copper, one gram gold. Very nice. Yeah, nice, nice combo. Um two percent zinc. And uh, you probably get another kind of bit of contribution there from the silver. And they, they, it, they've got a bit of lead as well. So nice combo. Um, 139, 38 meters. 139, 38 meters at 1% copper. Uh, 0.26 grams gold. So kind of considerably less gold there, but that's also not too bad. Um, zinc, silver, good. Um Right, so uh, and so on, und so weiter. The CEO, Mark Pei, says these new drill results from K continue to point to its expansion potential with three holes encountering both high grade, copper rich, and gold rich mineralization. Future drill holes will target this area as part of the continuing May resource definition program. Yes, yes, what I find kind of it's it's every time i look at this company every time i look at this deposit i never really know what's going on in the geology there's, there's very few geological maps there are very few sections this is just kind of an aggregate and compiled section it does seem to me that there is this kind of this lens through here but there's also quite a lot of stuff going along up here um there's a long section um and then i find this kind of stuff at the bottom the true width of the mineralization is estimated to be the 50 to 99 percent of the core reported width reported core width with an average of 76 percent okay so the 20 meters intersection might be 15 or it might be 10 or it might be 20 we don't know um and then it goes on to say assumptions used in the in 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 dollar terms for the copper and gold metal equivalent were metal prices of 463 copper that's quite chunky 193 um, 1,937 gold. That's very low. Actually, it's not very low, but it's a bit lower than where we are at the moment. Assume metal recoveries are based on a, a preliminary view of historical data with this. And they said the analyzed metal equivalent calculations are reported for illustrative purposes only. Quite. Yeah, because they've got no way of telling what those things are. And what are the payables? So, you know, what are the payables? This, this zinc, for example. Does that take all of the silver with it? What are the payables on zinc? Zinc concentrates are famously low on their payables. You know, um, what? You know, where does where do the precious metals apportion to? It, is all of the gold in the copper, or does some of the copper go with the zinc as well? So, um, yeah, these 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 metal recoveries, and the, it's it's not just the recoveries; it's the payables that are so crucial, particularly when you've got zinc in the mix. So. Um, it's an interesting company at two hundred sixty-three million dollars. Obviously, lots of people like it. Um, I, I I want to warm to it more, but I feel as if I need more from the company before I warm to it. I want to see um, geology in the cross sections. I want to see lots of cross sections. I want to see cross sections for individual holes. I want to um, kind of get away from this clinging to um, uh, the copper equivalents. You know, they they say it's just for illustrative purposes only, but they don't illustrate it. They ram it down your throat. So anyway, I think that is it for this week. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do um, the last three weeks. I think I'm I, I'm still catching up, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening or watching. Cheerio.